Hello everybody, my name is Dorothee from Werkstatt für historische Stickmuster and thank you so much Caroline for opening your channel for me. I want to talk about silk today, about silk floss for stitchers and um, I only stitch with silk floss. Why? I have been interested um, since I started stitching in antique samplers since the mid 1980s and I admired the antique samplers in the museums, at some point I wanted to embroider myself. I always thought the girls and the young women in the last centuries were able to create such wonderful works of embroidery, such wonderful works of art and why have we lost this ability and then I made up my mind and uh, shortly after a friend gave me a small set of um, a stork scissor and a thimble for the birth of my daughter which I thought was simply beautiful I bought linen and uh, I bought uh, cotton threads and just started. I really didn't like the result. I found my colors too striking, the linen was not uh, fine enough and compared to the museum pieces my work was sobering. I had achieved neither the fine colors nor the sheen, nor the delicacy of the old samplers. And I really was convinced it couldn't be me, but only because of the materials I used. So I started looking for other materials. The internet didn't exist. One was dependent on the local needle workshop. And what I found there wasn't that what I searched. Finally, in a shop in Worpswede, which is a very famous German uh, artist colony, I found, found some threads of Swadalger, the silk from the French company Auvers Aswa. And in Worpswede, in this needlework shop, they didn't sell the silk in skeins, they cut it, the skeins in pieces of one meter and they only had a very poor selection of colors and sold it for a quite high price. And my first consideration was what should I do with one meter? I need hundreds of meters and hundreds of colors. So the company was mentioned on the bandrol. Here I have uh, the silk of Auvergne-Soir, a bunch of um, red skeins and uh, the company of course is mentioned on the banderol and I uh, thought that's quite easy from here it is a five hours drive to Paris by car or by train and so let's go. Uh, the Auvergne Aswa showroom on Rue Réaumur in Paris was paradise. Silk in all colors, silk in all qualities. I really was happy. Since then there has been nothing else for me and uh, the old samplers were embroidered in silk until around 1840 and now I finally liked my own embroidery and um, we founded our company in 2004 and right from the beginning we had silk in our needlework kits. Let's say a little bit about silk. Silk is an ancient product. Silk floss is shiny, is strong and silk floss is very long. These are the characteristics that set silk apart from every other of the natural fibers. 
Silk is used for several thousands of years. In China, the domestication of the moth began nearly 7,000 years ago. Even after more than a century of attempts to provide an artificial substance to replicate silk and its quality, no single synthetic fiber replicates really silk. The fascination silk still holds for many is partly due to its sheer beauty and its long history, which is laden with tales of, of course, romance and adventure. Unique to silk, too, is its rightful claim as one of the handful commodities that have shaped world history. Astonishing is the longevity of silk. The oldest archaeological finds containing silk are over 5,500 years old. The so silk worm is an insect which is totally dependent of the leaves of the mulberry tree. A silk worm undergoes a complete metamorphosis. When growth has reached maximum, the larva closes itself into a cocoon. And here I have a cocoon. You see the fine uh, fibers. This is a cocoon. And after about 10 days, the cocoon spun by a worm is split and a butterfly emerges. The moss creates a hole between the filaments that form the cocoon through which it emerges. As soon as the moss emerge from the cocoons, the moss mate and deposits their eggs, completing their life cycle. Then only the suitable eggs are incubated in uh, specially equipped rooms at a temperature of um, 25 to 28 degrees Celsius and a humidity of 75 to 80 percent for 12 days. Uh, you don't find lots of literature about silk. Um, this is a book which I really can appreciate and you find lots and lots of information about silk. And here you see the cocoons, which are still intact. The domestications of the ancestors of the silk worm about 5,000 years ago is ascribed to some agricultural communities in China, whose members raised silk worms in their houses and devised a complete system for their care and for the production of silk floss and precious textiles. Perhaps you can see it. This is some um, raw silk. And you see um, how fine the single fiber, the, the single uh, the filament is. Uh, the finished cocoon is constituted of a single thread, which can be as long as 1,200 meters, as long as 1,308 yards. After harvesting the cocoons, it is necessary to kill the worm before metamorphosis is completed. The cocoons must first undergo a process of cooking. This process is called cooking. The cocoons are put for a few minutes in a boiling in boiling water, which, allo which allows a fast and uniform reeling. Finally, two or more reeled threads are twisted together and prepared for dyeing. Now I want to show you the different silks we use for stitching and talk a little about a little bit about the quality and of course the use of silk floss. First of all, there is Soie d'Alger. Soie d'Alger is the silk we use most for embroidering. Uh, Soie d'Alger has a great advantage that this silk is available in nearly 630 colors, 
especially when you want to uh, stitch old samplers, you have fine colors of beautiful shades. Swadaji is a spun silk. There are five there are five meter skeins, and uh, it you can divide every skein in seven threads. So you have 35 meters uh, of silk thread available when you stitch with one thread. Swa Dalje um, is perfect for 36, 38 and 40 counted linen. It is loosely plied and can split very easily. I have stitched the colors of the Netherlands with Swa Dalje on 50 counted, 38 counted linen and you see the wonderful uh, pale green and pale blue shades combined with cream and a dark blue. I have stitched a color card of Swadalje. Uh, this color card um, is stitched on 40 counted linen, nearly 630 squares. Each square consisted of 225 stitches and of course a little number in backstitch and this is the stitched color card I made beautiful colors it's a hard to decide which colors to use The next uh, quality of uh, silk I want to show you is uh, Soie de Paris. Soie de Paris comes on spools of uh, five meter and you can divide it into six threads. Soie de Paris comes from the most valuable middle thread of the cocoon. It is a silk of the highest quality, which you can already see from its extraordinary sheen. Soie de Paris is filament silk, which means that the basic uh, fiber is pulled from the cocoon in one piece. It is not spun silk. The single thread is a little thinner than that of Soie d'Alger and not as fluffy. With Soie de Paris you can set wonderful shiny highlights while embroidering and Soie de Paris is available in 105 colors. Uh, colors the spools are very tricky. You can open uh, the top a little bit and um, the thread comes out and if you want to store it just a click and the thread is fixed and you can uh, store it quite easily. Then we have um, Swa Oval. Swa Oval is also a very high quality filament uh, silk. The threads are not spun and very important, perhaps you see it, they are not twisted either. Filament is um, a term for fibers of practically unlimited lengths. Filament means that the fibers are from the middle of the cocoon and they can be unwound nearly endlessly without tearing. Swa Oval is available in 90 colors and many many very fine silk threads lie flat next to each other and together form the embroidery thread. Swa Oval is not very easy to stitch with. It's, it's a little bit sticky on the hands, but it's ideal for needle pen painting and has a fantastic effect. Then we have um, Swa Gobelin. Swa Gobelin is a highly twisted silk. Perhaps you see it. It's a highly twisted silk, like a fine pearl thread. With uh, Swa Gobelin, two threads are twisted. And if you see the classical pearl yarn, there uh, three threads are twisted. The thread is not divisible. Uh, Swa Gobelin is available on 30 meter spools and can be wonderfully stitched with on 36, 38 and 40 counted linen. I have stitched uh, Quaker's Pride. 
our last release on 50 counted, 36, 38 counted gray linen from um, Graziano with um, Swago Belin. And um, it fits perfectly on this linen. It has a very, very nice structure because it is um, twisted so highly it tends to fray out while stitching and there is a very very neat product um, with which you can um, stop fraying of the thread it is the thread uh, conditioner i bought it in the united states uh, and i think it is available in canada and the united states and inside is a little box with um, bags and you just take your um, yarn and pull it through the wax and then it won't fray out anymore it is strengthens and the wax keeps the yarn from fraying and it uh, doesn't matter concerning the linen, no problem. Um, then we have a Swa 103. Uh, if you want to embroider very finely, choose um, Swa 103 or Swa Surfin. You can stitch with Swa 103 on 56 counted linen and um, it is spun silk and twisted and is as thin as a sewing thread you can use it for the sewing machine as well and it's also ideal for quilting the silk floss then gives the quilt a very special no note of delicacy and elegance uh, Swa 103 is also suitable for making lace and for making bobbing lace it comes on 150 meter spools and those who like it even finer can use Swasurfine. Swasurfine is the thinnest silk available. And then we have Swa Perle. Swa Perle is a very, very uh, shiny and uh, wonderful pearl yarn, very intense. Swa Perle comes in 300 colors. It's also made of filament silk, so the silk yarn is not spun here too. The entire length of the fiber is drawn from the cocon. Swaperle is twisted from three threads and that makes it absolutely tear resistance. It's great to embroider on 28 counted or 30, count, 30 counted linen, even to 32 counted linen. And uh, this cushion, it's a Christmas motif, not exactly the, uh, fitting for the season in the moment, but um, the checkered linen is uh, 11 counted, 30 counted linen from uh, Graziano. And I think you can see that the pearl yarn um, matches uh, perfectly with, um, with this linen. So there are so many different qualities of linen, so many possibilities and uh, so endless stitching fun with silk. I hope you have enjoyed it and bye bye. Mm -hmm.